No injury is ever an easy one to accept, but the Achilles is definitely one you want to try to avoid. In this video, I want to go over a few ways to actually maintain proper health of the Achilles, but also what the general function is. So let's start with the function of the Achilles. When we look at the Achilles, it's a very thick tendon that connects the lower part of the leg, the calf muscle, to the foot. So when we look at the Achilles, there are different actual aspects of it and what we use it for, but three main things. There's the push-off phase, where whenever we're walking, running, or doing some kind of activity such as jumping, we have to have a connector from our foot to actually a calf muscle, and that's the purpose of the Achilles, the tendon itself, which is a thick tendon. Or maybe when we're decelerating, meaning we're walking, but we don't want that foot to fall forward, well, the action of the front of your anterior tibialis muscle and the Achilles itself helps to stabilize that foot for proper positioning. And then you have the last part of it, which is the stabilizer. So in general, with, for example, me standing here, I have to have muscles or tendons in general to, to activate around the joints to help me keep stable so I maintain my balance without falling over. So let's move on to actually keeping a healthy tendon. So when we look at the Achilles, we have to ask the reason, why is this such a hard one to rehabilitate? Because if you ever heard of someone having an Achilles injury, it's a very lengthy process whenever we go through the rehabilitation phase. So you think of other areas of the body, such as the meniscus in the knee, maybe the disc in the back, or even the supraspinatus of the shoulder, the rotator cuff, and you ask the question, why are these areas hard to actually rehabilitate? Well, we look at the first part of maintaining a healthy Achilles. We have to understand that it has a poor blood supply. When there's a poor blood supply and there's injury or damage to the area, well, it's not getting the nutrients it needs to actually get in there and speed up that healing process. So it's more lengthy process of going through the activities to get the nutrients and the cells to do their job to heal it in the first place. So that's part of it. The second part is looking at alignment. So when we look at alignment in general, we think of the Achilles tendon as being straight up and down. Well, in general, that's how our muscles are aligned up, the muscle fibers where they connect. But with the Achilles, they're actually intertwined. So I'm going to show you an example here because most people, when they just do the basic stretching for getting the ankle, the calf, the Achilles stretched out, they'll just do a basic straight on stretch. So they'll put the heel down, toe up on a little prop, and then lean into it. Well, that may work in general for getting that lower part of the leg, the Achilles, the calf muscle stretched out in that range. But understanding if it's more of a cross pattern, then we have to go from different angles. So when we're doing actual Achilles stretch, it's not just going in and going for the stretch, but we have to add in some movement, some activities around with maybe with the other leg or change our foot position to actually get those fibers that are intertwined across to get the full stretch out of the full Achilles. So it is a little bit more time consuming, but it actually plays a better part in your overall function and rehabilitation phase whenever you're looking to avoid the injury. And the third part we have to look at is joint alignment. So most people may not think about this, but when you have a hand dominant pattern, myself being right-handed or maybe you're left-handed, we all go into this pattern that rotates our joints, positioning us differently down the leg or even up the body. So when we have this rotated pattern, each foot's gonna be a little bit offset. So that right there, over a period of time, adds to tightness of the joint. So you may have known someone that maybe they're right-handed, they're gonna typically have a foot that wants to turn out to the right and then over pronate, so flatten out on the bottom part of the foot, or on the left side, they'll have a little bit of what they call supination higher arch. So when we look at that, that offsets the joint. Thus, you put a little bit more or a different tension on each Achilles. Well, you may think of that just as a different force, but in general, when joints don't line up and they're offset on where they connect with the joint receptors that feed the nervous system, you're limiting that amount of connectivity, the strength that actually happens around that joint to provide that stability. So all that being said, you definitely want to work on your mobility exercises. You definitely want to work on some stretching. Change it up, add some dynamic activity in there. You know, other than just doing a straight on stretch with the calf or Achilles, uh, you want to get in there and add some active movement to the side because you again want to hit those cross patterns. Again, the Achilles is one of those that doesn't have a great blood supply. So we have to do other things to get in there and actually improve the health of it, whether it's good nutrition, modalities, or other things that actually drive actual nutrition into the cells around that area to speed up the healing process. So again, we can't always avoid injuries because of force or maybe a position that we're in, especially if we're in an athletic event or a trauma experience where we just have something that has too much force that area. But you can lessen the chance of actually having that injury and sustaining a long-term rehabilitation program that you'll have to go through. So when it comes to overall human function performance and understanding the Achilles, if you have any questions, reach out, consult with someone to understand what you can do to accelerate not only the way you improve your mobility exercise, but improve that muscle tendon action and how to actually keep it from getting injured in the first place.